Go on, give Mona a hand as she takes the seat and the creative team. You guys are amazing. Before you sit down, what do we pray? We pray for the word? I love, thank you, Rachel. Let me just pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its power, for its might. We thank you in an ever-changing world that your word is absolute truth. Thank you, God, that we can throw all our questions, all our desires, all our thoughts up against it, God, and, and it will bring about truth. You created us. You know us intimately. You gaze into the hearts and the souls of every single one of us 24-7. We thank you as we come around your truth, we come around your word, God. I pray that every one of us, we would submit ourselves to it internally and externally, God, just allow it to have its way in our lives. And we declare, as your word says, that your word never, ever, ever returns void. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said... To the person next to you, say they are looking amazing. Just tell them they're incredible. And it's so good to have Jerry back in church. So, so good. And uh, he's been, he'd been out with a condition and he's back in church. And I got a little bit emotional when I saw him. He walked in the door. I got a little bit teary. I was like, wow, big hug. I know I was the only one. He didn't really care. Um, and Lou. It was actually the same. It was like him, and then a minute later, Lou walks in, and uh, it was like, yeah, it just kept on going, and down in sunny Aladala. Sometimes God calls people to hard places. Well, which, which son called them? Anyway, just kidding. I'm going to talk on a topic. Before I do, uh, I... I I encourage you to come along to our giftings course. If you haven't done something like that before, um, we talked a lot about giftings. And I, I think they're absolutely phenomenal. You know, we are the body of Christ. And your part and your place and the way you're knitted and fitted is wrapped around the gifts that God's put in your life. Every gift in your life that God gives you, whether it's motivational gift, whether it's the Holy Spirit manifestation gifts, or an ascension gift, they all come from the Holy Spirit. And, and the Holy Spirit moves through your gifts, amen? And I think it's important for us to understand what they are and get our heads around them. No course is perfect because it's God. We don't have all the angles, but it'll help you identify who you are. So put, circle that in your diary and come along. It'll be great. But this morning, I want to talk on... The three Ds. I'm going to call this a chat on 3D. 3D is pretty much gone, right? Who has a 3D TV at home? That's exactly right. No one. Who, who for a season got into it and you, had, you were sitting there with those big glasses in your lounge room and then you just thought, what am I doing? This is so stupid. Who did that? Yeah. Who didn't even know about the 3D thing that came and went, yeah, Russell Potts, because you, he's just always reading his Bible. Oh, yeah. So I want to talk on, the topic is discouragement. Is that all right? So I want to encourage you this morning by talking on discouragement. And, uh, you know, discouragement is something in our lives, I think, where our lives come up against discouragement all the time. No matter who you are, where you come from, what walk of life you come from, discouraging things happen. And we're going to talk about some of discouragement's friends, disappointment and distress. They kind of come as the three Ds. And, and look, I think for us and probably for me in, in ministry and in life, I think discouragement would be one of the things that I have to guard myself against constantly. Um, and be in control of, because discouragement, there is so much opportunity. Amen? I'm going to tell a story about my daughter. 
there's these shoes, and they're Nike shoes, and uh, these shoes are sought after, and they only have so many of them. They're Jordans, and uh, they, they are, these shoes, I mean, they, I think they, they sell retail for about, what, 150 160 around that mark, but if you get a hold of these prized items, you can sell them um, for 300 400 someone even said 600 So, there's a bit of a group in our youth group who are in the mode. And what you've got to do is, is when a store comes out, a day store, you, you, they only have so many. And if you queue up for them, and the way you queue up for them is you normally have to get there the night before. And you have to sleep out all night outside of Westfield. And then when the doors open, um, you, you allow yourself to get to the store and then you get these shoes, which for a lot of people can translate into doubling their money or whatever. Um, so my daughter, Annalise, lined up. I think she went there at 11 p.m. and towards stayed there all night and then there was a big rush. The Westfields opened and apparently... Everyone just rushed, and I've seen a video of her screaming with her friends running to this store from the beginning of, of the Westfield, the front door, and you, and you have to line up, ready, and then you have to wait for a couple of more hours there for the shop to open, because the Westfield is open, but it might be like, I don't know, seven, and then there's two more hours. And then, so she gets there, there's screaming, yelling, she finds out she's about the 20 first or 19th person and her sister went the other week and her sister got these shoes. Everyone say, hello, Madeline. <laughs> um, and, and so she, but she decides in that moment that there isn't going to be 20 sets of these shoes because there generally never is. There's only eight or nine. So after waiting all night, she goes home. only to find that those faithful, and there was a few from the youth group, stayed for the extra two hours and there was more than 20 peers. Would you call that disappointment? I saw her the next day when she finally woke, around two, two in the afternoon, and she was very disappointed that you put that much time and effort into something. Life throws disappointment at you, Amen discouraging disappointment. I mean, as believers, disappointment, discouragement, despair can be the enemy of our faith. It can be the enemy of progress moving forward. If you've got discouragement, um, you've come up against something, you can convince yourself to not try again, not go for it, not believe for something. It can even affect the way that we see God's promises. You have enough, enough discouragement and, and despair and disappointment in your life, you can actually get to a place where you just think, you know what? Yeah, sure. That might happen for someone, but it's not going to happen for me. How many people here have faced disappointment, discouragement, despair? Raise your hand. All of us, in some way or another. And in the natural, it affects our self worth, it brings and affects our mental health. It can affect our physical health. It can affect our relationships, our work, our career. Ultimately, our ability to be happy can be affected by this area of discouragement. And I believe when you put these three together, disappointment, distress, discourage, the discouragement, the three Ds, and when we face this in our lives, the, the reality is for us as believers, we need to realize that life will throw these things at us. And sometimes there are constant seasons of this. Amen? There is actually nowhere where God will just completely remove you from these three areas. Occasionally God has done miracles and pulled people out of situations like that. But the reality is that these are things that we call life. And God has a different strategy. When we look at the life of Jesus, he was not immune to all three of these. 
Now, you look at the life of Jesus and you think, well, you know, he's, he's incredible. He's the, he's the ruler of the universe. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And it says he lived without sin. But he still faced disappointment. He still faced distress and discouragement. So for us, when we, when we, we look at this account, we're going to read it because actually the night before his crucifixion, I actually think the world or whatever you want to call it threw at him everything. All three of these distress, disappointment and discouragement were thrown at Jesus in his last night. And I want to speak into that because I believe that if you can have your worst night, just maybe God's got an incredible miracle on the other side of that. Amen? And I think for us as believers, we need to realize that these three areas can really hurt us. And I know I want to, um, let's talk about the life of Jesus because I think it's important for us to understand if he's perfect, then why did he, why was he affected by all of these? So let's have a quick look. If you've got your Bible, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Starting at verse 17. Everyone say verse 17. Now on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, Where do you want us to be? Hi Church, thanks for joining with us to Church Online today. It was great fellowshipping with you. For all details, go to www.baycitychurch.com. We love you, Church.